live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Picture this. You're a team in the postseason, and you're the head coach of said team that is one of the best in football. You're doing all this prep work for your upcoming matchup, you're preparing for the biggest game of the season and maybe one of the biggest games in franchise history, and you make sure that your team is in the best possible position to win the game. You're breaking down all the opposition's film, you're studying all their tendencies, and you're creating the perfect game plan to exploit their weaknesses and maximize your strengths. And then, you find out that you scouted the wrong team. You made a pretty big error. Because all the prep work that you did, yeah, it was for a team that you're not actually playing. Well, as hysterical and as ridiculous as that sounds, that's exactly what happened with the Miami Dolphins in 1971. Head coach Don Shula, one of the greatest minds in the history of the sport, was getting ready for his team to participate in the playoffs, and wound up being absolutely dumbfounded when he realized that he scouted the wrong team. And this is the story behind the mistake. Before I talk about the bizarre incident in question, we need some context to understand how the Miami Dolphins were doing heading into the playoffs, and why such a scenario could even exist. Entering the 1971 season, the expectations were pretty high for the Dolphins. When Don Shula came to the team in 1970, he was inheriting a team that was consistently near the bottom of the league. In the first four seasons that the Dolphins were a team, they won just 15 out of the possible 56 games, and had a losing record all four years. But when Shula took over in 1970, he immediately turned the team around, and got them to their first winning record and first playoff appearance in franchise history, as they went 10-4 and, and got the wildcard spot. Now the goal for Miami in 1971 with actual expectations was simple, make it back to the playoffs, and possibly win their first division title in franchise history. And through the first 11 weeks, the Dolphins were looking like one of the best teams in football. After winning just one of their first three games, the Dolphins went on an absolute tear, winning eight straight games. I talked about one of those wins that they had during that winning streak, which came against the Pittsburgh Steelers thanks to a remarkable performance by Bob Greasy. So if you want to learn more about that, click the card in the upper right corner. At a time where teams turning the ball over was fairly common, the Dolphins went four straight weeks without turning it over, as they were very good at holding onto the ball. Through 11 weeks, the Dolphins had the best record in football, being the only team in football to not lose multiple games. They had the best point differential at plus 152, they scored the second most points in the AFC at 272, only behind the Oakland Raiders at 296, and they had the second best defense in the AFC by allowing just 120 points, only behind the Baltimore Colts at 116. If you're playing so well that you're scoring roughly 25 points per game while allowing just over 10 points per game, that's a really good sign. Unfortunately, things took a bit of a tumble over the next two weeks, as they lost 34-13 to the New England Patriots and 14-3 to the Baltimore Colts. The good news was that entering the final week of the season, the Dolphins had clinched a playoff spot for the second straight season, as with a 9-3-1 record, even with the two recent blemishes on their mark, they were still comfortably in. The bad news was that the Baltimore Colts had overtaken the division lead, and entered the final week with a 10-3 record. The scenario for Miami entering the final week of the season was simple. If they won and the Colts lost, then the Dolphins would win their first AFC East title in franchise history. If both of these things did not happen, then the Dolphins would take the wild card for the second straight year. And as we were about to find out, the final week of the 1971 season was going to be a wild and crazy ride. Let's start with what the Dolphins did. It's December 19th, 1971. It's the final day of the regular season, and we have an interconference matchup on our hands between the Dolphins and the Packers down at the Orange Bowl. It's the first ever meeting between these two teams, and it's a beautiful day down in Miami. At 73 degrees, you can't ask for much better weather to watch a football game, especially in mid-December. And this was a big game for the Dolphins, not just because of the aforementioned division implications, but because of the fact that you want to enter the postseason on a high note, and entering on a three-game losing streak is not ideal whatsoever. Well, it's very clear that the Dolphins took care of business and did everything that they had to do on their end. Even though the game started off a bit slowly, as midway through the third quarter, the score was tied at six apiece, the Dolphins scored the final 21 points of the game. A one-yard touchdown run by Jim Kick gave the Dolphins a 13-6 lead. A one-yard touchdown run later in the third quarter by Larry Zonka made it 20-6 and started to put the game out of reach. And a 47-yard block field goal return by Curtis Johnson, which was the first and only touchdown of the cornerback's nine-year career, made it 27-6 and provided the dagger. The defensive line absolutely feasted on Bart Starr, who was playing his final game ever in the NFL, as the Dolphins recorded four sacks. Green Bay had just 86 net passing yards all day, and they called 26 passing plays. When your pass defense is allowing an average of 3.3 yards per dropback, that's obviously a really good sign. Miami only allowed one pass that went longer than 15 yards. 
They won the turnover battle once again, forcing two while only turning it over once themselves, and they didn't allow a single touchdown. In other words, especially on the defensive side, this was an absolutely dominant performance, and winning this game by three possessions was a really good sign. No matter what happened in Baltimore, at least the Dolphins were able to break out of their slump and were able to end the postseason on somewhat of a high note. But let's be honest, no way were the Colts going to lose their season finale, right? Well, prepare yourselves for one of the biggest end-of-the-season upsets ever. I talked at length about this game already in a previous video of mine, so if you want to learn more about how the Colts ended the 1971 season, click the card in the upper right corner. But no one, and I truly mean no one, expected the Colts to lose this game. They never lost a game to the Patriots before. In the three lifetime meetings between the sides, the Pats never even so much as scored a touchdown, scoring 12 total points for an average of 4 points per game. The Colts were playing at home at Memorial Stadium, a venue where they won their last 4 games and 17 of their last 19. The Patriots were the road team, and had lost 8 straight road games and 14 of their last 15 away from home. This was expected to be an absolute runaway, and the Colts had the AFC East on complete lockdown. But that's why they play the game. Because in one of the biggest regular season upsets of all time, the Patriots stunned the Colts on their home field. The Pats won a 21-17, and outside of the beginning of the game when it was nothing-nothing, the game was never even tied at any point, as the Pats had control the whole way through. Jim Plunkett played one of his best games under center for the Pats, throwing two touchdowns and no interceptions while posting a passer rating of 132, and Randy Vitaha, the 17th round rookie phenom, scored two touchdowns and had over 100 yards. It was a stunning result, and a stunning way for the Colts to end the regular season. Fun fact, this was the last time ever that the Colts lost a regular season finale with playoff implications in a stunning upset. Never happened again. I know, crazy, right? The Dolphins game took place at 1 o'clock Eastern, while the Colts game took place at 2 o'clock, thanks to blue laws that prevented Baltimore from holding games at the regular 1 o'clock time slot. So when the Dolphins won their game, they had no idea what was going on in Baltimore, especially since you have to remember that this was 1971, so you didn't have instant updates as to how the game was going. But then, one hour after the final whistle sounded in Miami, the final whistle sounded in Baltimore, and the Dolphins were officially the AFC East champions. You'd think this would be a joyous occasion, right? The Dolphins have the best record in the league. They made history by winning their first division title ever, and this was a fantastic way to end a fantastic season. But when Don Shula found out the news during a meeting with reporters, he wasn't celebrating. If anything, he was furious and upset. Why was he upset? Well, it had nothing to do with his team's performance or how the game went. It was because Shula had game planned for the wrong opponent. Before I talk about Shula's comments, let's back up for just a second and talk about how the playoff picture worked back in the early 70s. There had been a lot of stupid ideas and rules and systems in the history of the NFL. I've talked about some of them before, so if you want to learn more about one of them, which was the proposal of making field goals worth anywhere from 1-3 to three points based off of how far away they were, click the card in the upper right corner. But of all of those ideas, how the playoffs were structured might have been the stupidest one of them all. It made no sense whatsoever. Because instead of doing it like they did it today, where the teams were seeded by record, starting with the division champions and then going to the wild cards, back in 1971, there were no seeds. It was like whose line is it anyway, where everything was made up and the records didn't matter. Instead, the playoffs were determined on a rotational basis. It was predetermined every year as to which teams would play each other, as well as where the game would be held. The only thing that was a given was that the wild card had to be the road team no matter what. Other than that, if there were two division champions playing against each other, the home team for that game was determined months in advance. I cannot emphasize just how stupid the system was. This was the same system that in 1972 had the Dolphins go 14-0 and have an undefeated regular season, and yet forced them to play the AFC Championship against the Pittsburgh Steelers, an 11-3 team, on the road at Three Rivers Stadium. It was the same system that in 1973 had the Los Angeles Rams, despite finishing with the best record in football 12-2, traveling to Dallas to play their divisional round game against the 10-4 Cowboys. That same year, the Cowboys hosted the NFC Championship, despite having a worse record than the 12-2 Minnesota Vikings. I have no clue how the system lasted as long as it did, but that's the way it worked for the first half of the 70s, and it was absolutely terrible and unfair. But why do I bring this up? Because we knew throughout the entire 1971 season how the playoff picture was going to look. In 1971, the AFC East champion was going to play the AFC West champion, and the AFC Central champion was going to play the wild card. After Week 13, when the Dolphins lost to the Colts and lost their command of first place in the division, Miami was almost certain that they were going to be the wild card. And fortunately for them, they knew who was going to win the Central. 
the Cleveland Browns were 8-5 through 13 weeks. They weren't that good by any means. They had a point differential plus 5, which was miles below every other team in the playoff picture. However, they had a two-game lead on the 6-7 and seven Pittsburgh Steelers with one game to play, meaning that the Browns had officially clinched the AFC Central, winning their fourth division title in the last five years. What did this mean? Miami put all their eggs in one basket, getting ready for the playoffs. During the final week of the 1971 season, Cleveland was playing at Washington. Oddly enough, I talked a bit about that game in a previous video of mine, as it was very similar to the Heidi game where a bunch of fans were upset because NBC flipped the game early. To learn more about that broadcasting controversy, click the card in the upper right corner. At Miami, while they obviously wanted to win their game against Green Bay and end the season on a high note, seemingly punted away the chance at winning the division. They were going all in on Cleveland and getting ready for the postseason. While they were watching film on the Packers, they were watching film on the Browns and were starting their game prep. They even went as far as sending assistant coach Carl Tassif to Washington to get an up-close and personal look at the Browns. Keep in mind that Miami did not do this with any other team in the playoff field, including the Kansas City Chiefs, who had clinched the AFC West by this point and were guaranteed to play the AFC East champion. So when word got to Shula that he guessed wrong and the Dolphins actually wound up winning the division because the Colts laid an egg, he was dumbfounded and was upset, because in Shula's eyes, he had never even considered the possibility that the Dolphins would win the division. All the hard work getting ready for the Browns now had to be thrown out the window. All the preparation for Cleveland was done, and now the Dolphins had to prepare for an opponent that they never, not for one second, considered that they ever play. As Shula said quite bluntly, I forgot about Kansas City. I haven't picked the games too closely this year. He continued in the press conference and confirmed the fact that he was not joking, and that the Dolphins guessed heavily on Cleveland and never actually game plan for Kansas City. One reporter even went as far as saying after Shula's press conference that Miami won what almost was a booby prize for finishing in first place, and that even though they technically won the battle, because of this oversight, and because the Chiefs were regarded by many as a much stronger opponent than the Browns, they lost the war. Now the Dolphins only had a few days to get ready for the divisional round, and had to mentally prepare themselves for a completely different opponent. However, despite the bizarre and admittedly hysterical setback, I think it's safe to say that things worked out alright for the Dolphins at the end of the day. When it came time to play in the divisional round against the Kansas City Chiefs on Christmas Day, the Dolphins were prepared. What we got on that day was one of the greatest and most iconic playoff games in the history of football. I talked about that game and why the NFL stopped playing on Christmas for a very long time in the immediate aftermath of that game, so if you want to learn more about that, click the card in the upper right corner. But the Dolphins prevailed in double overtime by a final score of 27-24. It was the longest game in NFL history, lasting 82 minutes and 40 seconds in game time, and was the first double overtime game in the history of the NFL, although the 1962 AFL Championship went into double overtime about a decade before that. More than half a century later, that iconic divisional round game still lives on in history, and the Dolphins took advantage of that, and even though they didn't necessarily have the advantage in the divisional round due to their poor prediction and game planning, they had the advantage in the conference championship when they got to host the Baltimore Colts, who were the wild card, and play them at home at the Orange Bowl. Miami dominated that game, winning at 21-0 and advancing to their first Super Bowl in franchise history, where they would eventually fall 24-3 at the hands of the Dallas Cowboys in Super Bowl VI. Still, even despite the setback from the divisional round, they were able to not only win their first playoff game ever, but win their first conference title ever. It's hard to imagine a scenario like this happening today. With how much seeds can fluctuate, it's tough to go all in on one particular opponent in the playoffs like it could back then with how broken the system was. And with how large coaching staffs are, if something like this were to pop up, you could easily diversify your portfolio, and send a different coach or scout to a different game to watch a different team. Still, it's funny how one of the greatest coaches of all time, and an absolute icon figure in the game in Don Shula, made a mistake this glaringly bad, even if it did work out in the end. Because I'm sure the last thing any head coach expects, especially at this level, is to flat out scout the wrong opponent. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes, link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar Gear 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.